It's time for the Wrestling Perspective Podcast. I'm Dennis Farrell. He's the beast from the East. He's Bam Bam Lars Fredrickson. You know what? what? I just, it's so funny because I literally had a Bam. I was going to wear a Bam Bam t-shirt tonight. That's so weird that you say that. But I, I went for G-Raver instead because I'm doing laundry. But uh, <laughs> not not because I'm doing laundry. But um, but it's um, that's so funny that you say that, Dennis. Are you psychic? Is that what's I, going on? I, you know, I've been watching a lot of catfish lately because I've been locked up with COVID. So maybe that's it. I'm just catfishing you. Well, well, you did with this interview, you know what (laughs) I mean? (laughs) That's right. Hey, listen, I'm excited because I am a huge fan of Josh Woods. I somehow talked him into coming on this podcast. Look at him. (laughs) I, I intend to be your third favorite wrestling podcaster by the end of this interview. Third. I'm jumping from you have no clue who I am to third. So that's my intent by the end of this. I mean, so, that's a pretty high bar, Dennis. I know. So, uh, right. Josh. No pressure. And and I don't know how many. We've had a couple champions on here. We've never. Oh, we had Grisham on. So he, yours, he's our second pure champion on the podcast. So Well, we, we just had Silas. That's on right. His old partner. Oh, good old Silas. How's he doing? You know, when every, I love it because anytime anyone talks to Silas, you have to do the voice. Like, you know, you got to talk like, hey, man, you know, like, <laughs> you know, yeah, I've been doing this stuff, man, with man. Like, you have to do it. It's the best. Like, anyone in the locker room when they talk about Silas, it's his voice. And I love it so much. The, the best thing about that interview is the chain smoking he did during the whole thing. Yeah. Like, we've had a couple guys smoke. I think, uh, Oh, uh, who was the one guy? Damn it, I forgot his name. But anytime I sit here and I watch someone light up and then they light up again and then they light up again, I go, that's old school right there. Yeah. Dude, he's the same. We just wrestled a couple weeks ago. We went like 25 minutes. I'm like, hey, man, I need a minute. He's like, what are you tired? I'm like, no, dude. Fuck, man. He's just like smoking. I'm like, God. He's the best. He's so good. I wish like, I wish that, uh, you know, I know why we got split up, but I wish that didn't happen because I had so many, like, skits for us to do, and I was so pumped, but we didn't get to do any of them. I'm so sad. So sad. Well, that's one of my later on questions, but Dennis, kick it off here. Listen, I'm just going to have to ask you right now, uh, you know, Ring of Honor, we had Silas on. He talked a little bit about that, and you didn't really do the indie circuit before jumping into the wrestling scene. This is kind of a whole new territory for you, right? Yeah, it's uh, it's not fun, man. It's it's so it's, <laughs> you're laughing, but it's true. Like it's it's crazy because you know I've pretty much been signed to a company for the past seven years. I was in NXT for uh, a couple of years, then went to Ring of Honor almost immediately after that. So I haven't really had to do the indie thing. This is crazy. Because you reach out to people and, you know, you're trying to, you know, wrestle more, stay active. Either people don't respond to you or they just stop mid-conversation. It's like, hey, man, if you're not interested, just say, hey, I don't want to use you. I'm like, cool. But no one does it. They're just like, oh, I'm just going to leave it on red and I'm not going to talk back to you. It's like, why? It's a, yeah, it's a business, man. I don't know. People don't get all butthurt for no reason. I hate it. Let, let me follow that up, Lars, with this question. Of, has there been anybody to give you tips, tricks, how to navigate the indie circuit? uh so like i'm like best friends with jay lethal and like oh name dropping but like no me and jay are we're super tight and he's been trying to help me a lot and uh so it's like i'll be like hey man is this okay if i say this he's like no dude don't say that <laughs> i'm like okay okay back this, back this but jay's helped me a lot and like a lot of the boys have been have been helping as well because you know most of them have done this stuff before and they're like dude it sucks for you i'm like i know man i know <sighs> well i mean you know he the thing we got ROH taking a break, right? And then you see, you know, the champion, the ROH champion defending it on with the impact, you know, and then uh, these things are happening and you're the pure champion. I mean, does that give you some sort of hope in any way? I mean, isn't it weird to see that belt being represented on a completely different TV show? With- uh, it's not weird. It's awesome. I mean, Gresham is phenomenal and like i love watching gresham and learning from john so i think that's a, a great opportunity and i think it just like our style uh by our i mean you know like the pure style 
I wouldn't say me and Gresham are the same because we're obviously very different in our presentation and how we wrestle. But, you know, if you group us together, we're pure wrestlers, you know, and I think the more we can spread like that is great. You know, if, whether it's him, whether it's me, whether it's, you know, Hot Sauce or, or Red or other guys that think just like us, I think it's great that John's doing that. And I'm a little envious. So, yeah, I wish it was me because, like, I love wrestling and I love being able to, to do that kind of stuff. I'm glad John was able to showcase that. And that's it's great. Well, part of the reason why I'm asking that question is because you just did a, a, a match on AEW Dark, and uh, what was the reason that you didn't defend the belt there? I can't make them. I can't make them do that. You know, I can't, I'm only a, I'm only limited by so much. You know, I can only I can only hey I I can do it, but um, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I, that's a good question. Are you still allowed to? call yourself the pure champion are you allowed to bring the belt out i mean do you have that same freedom jonathan has right now uh i have it it's mine uh, they have to come get it if they want it back so um yeah i'll defend it everywhere and and uh until they tell me i can't or i'm not allowed to but as far as i'm concerned it's mine and i have it so whoever wants it come get some Lars, I mean, well, I've been I talking mean, nah. years about how you could beat them in in a pure wrestling match. Here's your oh. chance. Oh, well, you know, no, no, I'm not talking shit. See, if I talk <laughs> shit, I not not only would I bring a lunch, and then I also bring something to beat you with. So oh, I no, didn't do no, either. No, 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 weapons rules, man. <laughs> no weapons rules. Well, that, that's why I'm 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 the I'm the biggest heel on in North America, but. So, you know, I've seen you mature over the years, obviously, and you've gotten to become a, a very, uh, really good technical wrestler, but it's not something that I would necessarily equate you with. You know, was it one of those things when they decided to give you that belt, were you surprised in any way? Uh, not, I don't know. I don't think surprised. I think, uh, I, I mean, know. we've seen you in the, what I'm saying is I've always but, seen you more of a, as a brawler. And, and these things and in and, and your tag team with Silas and stuff like that, you guys had a, had a chemistry and, but, and so seeing you in this role, you know, I'm just wondering if you, you know, it was it as, you know, I saw that you were growing to that, but being able to, to, to have that honor bestowed, was it a surprise is what I'm asking. I mean, mm -hmm. no, not really. It was kind of, we'd always kind of talked about it and, and uh, the pure style, like, I love it. I, I love it so much. And, you know, um, you know, I you know, wrestled in college, you know, MMA and all that fun stuff. And so I think I think I was kind of made for the pure style, just the way, like, because of my background, they kind of, like, want me to be a certain way. And, oh, well, right. you're that guy, you know, but, uh, well, I don't want to be that guy. I like wrestling. I'm good at wrestling. Why can't I just wrestle? I got to beat people up all the time. I mean, you can beat people up through wrestling, but... Uh, I think like a lot of people who have like a similar background to me get like, here, you're this thing. It's like, well, I don't want to be that. So uh, I think it was just a matter of time because, you know, just everyone, like everyone just tell me, Hey man, like, dude, you're really good in the pure stuff. You like just stay with it and stuff. So like, and I, I, I really wanted to do it once the pure tournament came around, I started watching a lot more stuff and like, man, like, this is great. It's like right up my alley. So uh no, it wasn't really a surprise. It was, I'm just I'm grateful and happy. It was, it was awesome. It's cool. you're, you're a decorated college wrestler. You make the leap into pro wrestling. Was that a natural leap for you? Did you grow up a, a – look at that. That's flexing right there. He just looked behind him like, yeah, I mean, come on, look at me. That, <laughs> Lars, that might oh. be the best flex right there. Well, you oh. know what? I, I was going to put up my golden – I mean, his – he, he I, I just don't do it in the room with my golden platinum records. Cause see, we could actually, I could go well, to that should. room and That's so cool. You it should would, do it. No, but no, no, but you're right. He does have a lot of awards. I see a very decorated college wrestler. Were you a wrestling fan? Was this a natural leap? And was the transition harder than you thought it would be? Uh, so I mean, I casually watched growing up. I wasn't, I wasn't, um, uh, you know, like a lot of people in the business, like, oh, they're like diehard wrestling fans. I'm like, all right. Well, I mean, a lot. Of, so I like to say some people are like, oh, well, you don't, you don't know the business. I'm like, well, yeah, you were in your mom's basement watching it. But I was like wrestling. I was like perform. I was, you know, winning tournaments and trophies growing up, you know. So uh, I was a casual fan. And then uh, once I finished my senior year of college, uh, I linked up with a mutual friend and like helped him with some like transitional, some amateur moves to what he was doing. 
And then he's like, dude, you should hit up WWE. They would love guys like you. And I was like, all right, cool, man. Why not? Because I was going to fight. I had just uh, I had just helped Seth Petrozelli for one of his fight camps. And I was going to transition uh, into my own to qualify for the U.S. team because they were fighting in London that summer. But I ended up getting a tryout for WWE. And I was like, I built him out as a coach at the time. So I said, hey, wrestling is cool this is fun i like this after the tryout i'm like well i live in orlando can i come train here they're like yeah you can it doesn't work that way but i wouldn't take any more fights if i were you and i'm like oh what so um they kind of knew i was getting signed around then and uh as far as transitioning yeah yeah i mean we're taught moves i've been taught moves and and how to be an athlete my whole life i think it's the other stuff that was really hard uh the character like like having like the more personality and and, uh, you know, cameras and psychology and, like, why to do things. Because, I mean, when you're in a cage, you're getting punched in the face. You're not, you're not like, going, hey, let me hand <laughs> this person, right? You're not thinking about that. You're like, oh, my God, stop hitting me. Uh, so, <laughs> but yeah, like, that stuff is the harder part. And um, it took a little while. And I, I'm, I'm still learning a lot. But I feel definitely like this is the best version of Josh Woods is right now. Yeah, I mean, because in the amateur, you're not going to give away that you're in pain or that you're, you know, something is the way it is, right? So it's oh, like, the, you know, but, and there has been precedent of bringing, you know, obviously Olympians, Olympian wrestlers into pro wrestling, Kurt Angle being the example that everyone would know and mm -hmm. just how he skyrocketed and kind of it clicked for him. And you were saying as you're still learning. So is, is, is the hard part to get your mind around actually telling the story or is it more of the psychology of like selling and things like that for you? What, what was that? Well, excuse me. When you first stepped into the ring and started wrestling, was it the psychology or was it the, the selling? I think it was like a little bit of both, you know, because like for me, you, you, oh man, like at the performance center, this is, I can only speak from my own experience. I have no idea what it's like now, but there were so many coaches there. You had, you had Bill DeMott, you had Matt Bloom, Billy Gunn, Norman, uh, Robbie Brooks, Terry Taylor and uh, like Adam Pierce, you know, you got seven coaches, uh, seven different people who've done seven different things in this business. Like, well, do this, do that. And you're like, oh my God, I got, okay. So, you know, and, and then you, one person doesn't like this and one doesn't like that. So I'm just like, my mind is just, fuck. And I'm just trying to like, well, the psychology is like hard for me. And, and then, you know, well, if I, if I'm really this fighter and, and my, you know, they want me to be this person, this background, well, if I really punch someone, they're not getting up and running a high spot. They're not getting up and giving me a boot because they're knocked out. So, you know, and then you want things to be real because we're, we're suspending disbelief. That's what the whole business is about. And uh, you, you have to have some validity to what you're doing. I can't say, well, I'm this badass MMA college national champion, but then if I hit someone, they get up and they run a high spot. Well, how legit am I at that point? You know, so now it's like finding the happy medium and, like that was really kind of difficult for me. It's like, cause I have asked a lot of questions like, well, why is it like that? Uh, why, why can't this be that way? And like, well, cause this is an MMA fight. I'm like, well, okay, I get that. But like, if I punch someone smaller than me, they're not getting up. Like, oh, that's real. You know, cause MMA is becoming huge. It's huge now. Um, and UFC and everyone knows UFC. Everyone knows what an arm bar is. Everybody sees people get knocked out on their Facebook, on their Twitter, you know? So like you have to, you have to kind of stick with the times. So, and, and then now with my, like some of the movesets I do, like those are the reasons why I don't do certain things or I'll do them in certain spots because they have to make sense. And I want to protect my brand. Um, so like that was the hard part for me. And I'm slowly past that and, and uh, selling is all, uh, selling is fun because I learned that from Billy Gunn and like, Billy is phenomenal. So like I try, I'll be like, okay, yeah, you're doing it that. Okay, that's what I'm gonna do. So like that, that was the fun part for me. So that wasn't as difficult as like the the whys or hows and wheres. If that makes sense. Yes. Yeah. Do you do you feel like you have a lot of catching up to do as far as learning the wrestling industry. Do you go back now and watch a lot of older wrestling or even newer wrestling to kind of catch up and see what everybody's been talking about? Um, I, I don't think I'm behind. I think I've done. I didn't mean it like that, good. but you, you were not, not a either. wrestling fan. So right. you feel like you have to go back and I guess maybe you learn a little Why bit. Why do you like, always got to insult these guys, Dennis? I'm embarrassed for you now. Yeah, you're, calling, you're basically person. saying he's behind because you know he's a wrestler. He doesn't think, I, I and that's terrible. Heard. Why would you talk about his mother like that? My apologies. She's a great woman. You never, 
<laughs> See? Uh, um, <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't feel like I'm like really behind. And and for me personally, I try not to watch a lot of stuff just because if I have an idea, I want it to be authentic. And and yeah, I'll, I'll be like, hey, what do you think about this? Like, oh yeah, so and so does that. I was like, oh okay, you know. So I, I want the ideas that I have to be authentic. So I try not to watch a lot, but there's stuff I like to watch. I definitely watch more now. But I, uh, when I was in the performance center, I did watch a lot of wrestling, like older stuff, more current things, because I wanted to acclimate it with the business and learn who people were and why moves are called this and who's done them and stuff like that. So I did a lot of like catching up, so to speak, and educating myself. So I'm not coming into a business and just being like a total idiot. So mm-hmm. well, you said to- you said something that's pretty interesting because it's something that I've had a sort of a complaint with about today's wrestling in there in the psychology bit aspect of it is like i'm bigger than this guy i punched the little guy why is he then fucking running the ropes doing a high spot fucking her and can you know whatever it's like a hundred things it's like even that match between dustin and what's his nuts the other night you know the guy takes a fucking you know canadian destroyer what's up through a fucking table and then gets fucking you know somehow i don't know anyways long story short obviously i'm making it longer the pure style of wrestling, right? And what is is the, what you were saying is congruent with you. I can see how that's a, such a good match for you because of just that thought that you had. So the psychology in the pure style, can you explain the difference? If there is a difference? Well, I know there's a big fucking difference, but my point is, is in, in your regular wrestling match, spot fest, what are you trying to do in the pure wrestling match that you wouldn't be doing in the spot fest besides spots? Well, I mean, <laughs> it's all a spot, right? You break it all down. And right, it's, but it's like, it, it's, uh, I think I think what makes well pure wrestling is is different because you know there are rules, and yeah, some people uh, do a little more spotty because you. For me, and uh, this is a big Billy Gunn thing. Uh, I mean, it's boring, really. If you if people just you're because you're so you you've seen so much movement and and and. 500 falsies in a match and all these spots so people are used to that so i I want you have to have some sort of movement so you have to have uh a a break in the in the chain wrestling or or grappling or whatever you want to call it there has to be some sort of break in, in, in that so there are some marginal for high spots right but I uh, think like the psychology of you can use their rules. You got to use them. And the rope breaks are are crucial because that makes a big difference. And, and uh, I can only slap on so many submissions before you run out of rope breaks. And then, you know, then that comes into play and then you can pin people on ropes and submit them through the ropes. And, and I think like, that's what makes it so unique and different. Whereas we're now with regular matches, it's just kind of like, Oh, whatever happens, happens, you know, you know, a lot of people they make the ref look bad or, or they try to they break the rules blatantly and they're not smartening up the refs and stuff. So it's just like, and like when I think pure wrestling, it just takes what wrestling is now and just brought it to a, the next level, in my opinion. And I'm biased 100 percent, but I don't care. So a few minutes ago, you were talking we were we were talking about character development and in your career. As far as character development, was there one person that really had an impact on you, helping you understand and develop who the Josh Woods on camera persona is? Uh, yeah, I've had a lot of really good teachers with this kind of stuff. Uh, I think, I, I guess, like the biggest break, the biggest breakthrough that I've had from being just the wrestler and performer to the personality to all in one, I guess it would have to be Silas. Cause I think, I think that was my, when I was with Silas, that was like the biggest growth overall that I had. Uh, but I got to spend a lot of time learning from Dusty, uh, you know, Billy, Adam Pierce, those guys have helped me a lot. And, um, and you know, now like, you know, Jay Lethal has, has kind of helped me a lot and, and Matt Taven and, and Silas. So like, I have like a very good solid core of guys that, you know, or know so much more than me and they're very willing to help. So that's, but I think the biggest uh, influence has been Silas, whether whether he likes to admit it or not. Well, he'll admit that he helped a lot. So that's not a problem. Was Rob Naylor down there with you? 
Um, I know who he is, but I don't think he was. I don't think he was with the company when I was there. But I know who he is. Okay. Now, when you said Robbie Brooks, were you meaning Robbie Brookside? Yeah, Brookside. Yeah, yeah. So he's a big, huge, huge music fan, and I kind of wanted to kind of get, get into that. What are you? What music do you listen to? What are you into? And I know that's a. a I never ask music questions ever. And for some reason, you mentioned Robbie Brookside, who's got a bigger record collection than I could ever imagine. Um, do you do you listen to music? If you do, what what is your what what's your jam? Oh man, dude. So I'm a total nerd, man. So growing up, my oldest brother Julian, he is like very musically inclined. All of us are very good at something. I'm not musically inclined. I'm oh, very rotten. But he was, he won like a, in college, he won like an international barbershop, um, uh, whatever, quartet. Barbershop right? quartet. Yeah. yeah, he won like a, a competition in like international in college and, and he's in a band. He reads, writes, and produces. So I grew up, you know, just enjoying all kinds of music from like Barry Manilow and to Whitney to, you know, System of a Down and Anthrax and all those guys. And, and like, so my, my library is just huge, but um, I appreciate everything. I listen to a lot of opera, which is so weird. But like, I like, I, I like opera a lot. Uh, I, I just enjoy it. I, I like, I listen to different things for different reasons sometimes because the, the message is good or because the melody is great or just, it just sounds good. Cause a lot of stuff I'm like, man, I don't know what the hell they're saying, but I like it, <laughs> right? Like I don't speak German, but I listen to Ramstein. I'm like, yo, let's go. Like, I don't know what they're saying, but I like it. Bro, uh, I'm in a I'm in a fucking German band that sings in German, and I don't even know what they're fucking saying. So I, I know what you mean. <laughs> yeah, so, I, mean, I like I've been I guess I'm in a little more alternative right now, like uh, like Dance Gavin Dance and uh, like Amorosa, like Johnny Johnny Craig. I like him a lot. Uh, yeah, I'm like I've, God, I don't even like saying this kind of stuff. It's good, like do this. You should stop stuff. now. Yeah, <laughs> like well, no, you know, I'm, I'm, it's just I, I'm curious because you know you're uh, obviously you know, a badass. And it's like, I always kind of want to know what's going in, you know, to your heads, like what's calming you down or what's bringing you up. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. So well, that image is totally gone now. Cause <laughs> like, so right now, I, so this would just kill me. Just if say, I said, say it, say it. You got I, it. I, I know. I know. I'm embarrassed. <laughs> uh, Miley Cyrus has a really good version of nothing else matters. And I've been, I've been, I've listened to it a lot. It's, it's well done um so like that's kind of like all right it's, it's on my like my my little playlist uh well it was wonderful having you here tonight uh, oh no, <laughs> no, just, no. Playing, just playing just playing just playing <laughs> yeah like I, I remember like in college like um for before like big matches so like uh like system of down is like my big go-to for like um pump up just get in the zone questions is my is my all-time song uh, it's my PR song. It's my in the gym. Like I need, I need to crush this weight right now. Boom, boom. Questions and let's go. That that's my go-to. Gotcha, gotcha. I saw them live one time at Ozfest, and they headlined with Disturb, and I was like, oh my god, great, <laughs> great. I never felt like I could beat up somebody that's bigger and more muscles than I do <laughs> right now in my life, which I know I can, but I've never felt like it. Like right now, listening to you talk music, I'm like, I think I might be able to take this guy. Uh, yeah, you know, well, let yeah. me tell you something. Opera, opera is pretty hard, man. The opera is pretty hard. I mean, that reminds me of like a lot of the gangsters I knew growing up. Dug the opera, so I'm backing off. Yeah, man. See, respect, Dennis. On the other hand, <laughs> I'm a hater. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm hating. All right, All haters right. gonna hate, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Are you gonna shake it off later? <laughs> oh man, now we're going down a totally. Anyways, uh, let's get back into wrestling talk because I've got so many more questions for you because, like I said, I'm a huge fan of yours. We were talking uh, to Dallas last week, and he had mentioned – or we brought up the fact that in your rivalry, you could see a a huge difference from the beginning. Like, yeah. I, I've been a fan of yours since 2019. I, that's when I really got into the Josh Woods and started really paying attention and watching you. And – during your rivalry with young i could really see a difference like it clicked something hit you i don't know what it is or how it happened but it, it seemed like you went from a good wrestler to phenomenal and everything you did just just kicked up and we asked him about it and he said you know he noticed it and saw it too mm -hmm. uh for you 
did you did you audibly is it maybe i'm making it up or i don't know but for you did you notice it did you feel that kick was that something that was like holy cow i i'm doing this at a higher level now uh, i think i think like that whole year that we spent together as a tag team just like really boosted my growth because i was put into bigger matches with silas and had to had to do more and, and the things like i the ideas i had were being listened to and i spent i spent a lot of time in the ring i think a lot of people who get to i'm not gonna say my position because you know who am i but i think a lot of people get to a certain point they get really good and they just stop training um or they think that they they made it or they don't have to work as hard but i've never been like that like i i train a lot i'm in the ring all the time and like i spent a I think 2019, I probably built a really good relationship with Jay and I went to Jay school a lot. So I think that kind of did help me mm. to, to, to boost because I was training with guys who were way better than me where prior to that, you know, in between NXT and then around, oh yeah, I guess around that time, I hadn't really had a very good like training partner or coach to kind of really tell me what to do. So like being able to be with Jay and like learn from him and, it's mind blowing because Jay's in the ring all the time, like almost every day. And like he'll bump for his students. And I'm like, yo, man, it's Tuesday. I'm not doing that. Like he doesn't care. He'll bump for anyone. Like I've, I'm like, shit. All right, let's go. So I think that was like the big turning point from, from then, like, I guess like maybe 2018 to like right when me and Silas were really starting to pick up as a tag team. I think that's like kind of one of the reasons why I grew a lot. And then once the pandemic hit, like I, I had access to a ring. So like I was in the ring a lot and I know a lot of our guys learned. So once the pure tournament came around, like there's, you can watch the match. I'm not going to name, I'm not going to name anybody because I'm not that guy, but some people were not in shape and you're like, Hey man, we got another 10 to go. And they're like, Whew. I'm like, yeah, brother, <laughs> breathe big boy. Cause we got to go. <laughs> you know? So, so yeah, 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 that's how that happened. And, and, and yes. And, and I think with Silas, cause like, it's it's so because Silas is who he is and and if, let's say I was in a tag team with let's say I don't know someone a little less on the card um let's say me and Brian were on a team because like that's a similar dynamic right Brian and, and Silas and, and me and one of them but like if I have an idea and I go hey Silas I think this would be better here the Silas will say the idea and it'll it'll happen but if I were to say it I, because I don't have as much clout or or maybe the guys don't respect me as much then they may not listen to it, but because I was able to do more and be more of like uh, an active member of the team, I, got, I grew a lot because I was able to do the ideas I had and, and put the things I learned to paper. Well, do you think that, you know, the comfort level that you did have with Silas made that what it was? Yeah, I, th I think we spent so much time. <laughs> oh my God. If I could just go back to like when we were tagging, and like I just showed you my like our, our conversation would be like blue, white, blue. Like I'm always <laughs> oh my god. I'm like that annoying. I'm like, yeah, that's me. I'm the annoying girlfriend. I'm like, hey, what are you doing, babe? What do you got? What's going? What do you think about this? Da, 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 da. And he's like, yo, can you stop? We just <laughs> started yesterday. I'm like, I know, but I guess the idea I have, let's do it. So yeah, like because I think we had we have such a good chemistry on screen, uh behind the scenes and stuff, like we're re we're really close and we're great friends and regardless of you know, people are like, oh okay, phase, I don't care, man. Silas is my friend and and um yeah, I think like that if you watch those three matches, the 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 first match we had, then the pure match we had, and then the the last man standing match. If you watch them like back to back, the story we tell is incredible. And I hate that there was like two, three months in between each one because like it gets lost. And, like that's mm -hmm. something we really wanted to do. Is like, hey man, we gotta tell the story. Like, like we it has to be like this. And I know he wasn't happy about losing that match because you know that's that's his thing. The last man standing. I'm like, dude, this it has to be this way. Like this is ha the story has to be like this. And he's like, no, you're right, dude, it does. And it's like, oh, I'm right. Oh, what? <laughs> like, you know, that's me. I'm like, yeah, okay. You know, so, like, yeah, I think I, if anyway, if, if people who are my, a fan of my work or just or want to watch, like, good storytelling, just, just watch those three matches in succession, and you'll be like, holy shit. I, we, yeah, like, that's probably, like, my favorite match I've had is, with, is the pure match that we had. All right, this might be a tough one because – 
No way. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to turn the screws to you now. All right, we're, oh. we're comfortable. You're all friends <laughs> now. We giggled. We had some laughs. Now it's time to take the gloves off and do some journalistic work here, kids. I like how he, uh, how he's getting a little softer with you now. When she when she said, "I'm coming after you." Yeah, and he's just like, "Oh yeah, come on, let's go." Yeah, come on. <laughs> Listen, you're you're still growing the Josh Woods on screen persona. Ring of yes. Honor shuts down now. It, it, okay. Is this a huge step back for you as far as developing who you are? Because on this show, we talk a lot about evo the evolution of a character, mm -hmm. especially with the older guys and then some of the younger guys when we get on. And now you're a guy that was just kind of just in the in, in the going up the mountain. Mm -hmm. Now, all of a sudden, it feels like you're cut short. You don't. I, as of right now, and you're probably not going to tell us if you signed anywhere because you know that's that's a whole secret and or who's approached you. I'm not going to ask that. But now you don't have a media outlet to really grow the Josh Woods persona. Do do you feel like you're stuck? You stop short of of your growth. Uh, well, that's where the indies come in, right? Like, um, I've had. You, there's like a lot of pressure on TV. I'm sure people will talk about it. Uh, if not, then they're full of shit. But there's, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's like an overwhelming for me because like I, I put a lot of pressure on myself. Like just being an athlete prior to being a pro wrestler, like I just demand a lot from myself. And if you really care about a sport or something you're passionate about, you demand a lot from yourself. And uh, I put a shit ton of pressure on myself to like, everything has to be good. Things have to be a certain way. I'm like, Kai, what do you think? I asked like 10 different people that thinks so I want to like, know. I want to know what I can improve on, how I can be better. So when like TV just kills you because you're so like, for me, that's for me. Like, I'm stressed. I want to make sure everything is great because, you know, my job is online because like my contract wasn't, hey, you're guaranteed this for X amount of time. Like at any time they go, nope, see you later. And like, that's scary, man. And like, I'm not Jay Lethal. I'm not a Jay Briscoe or, or Mark where I'm, I'm set. Like there's nothing I can do wrong. So like for me, every, every match for me, feels like, Hey, I have to, I have to be great or, or like that could be my job. But now that like on the independence, like, yeah, I can have fun. And I don't have to worry about, uh, I don't have to worry about that kind of pressure. Cause like, you can just have fun and do what you want. Like I think Styles was cutting a promo on our match we had, and I just laid on the apron. I was like, all right, man, whatever, dude. Like, take your time. Like, I don't care. Because, like, I'm a fun-loving guy, and, like, I like to have fun and, and, and not have to be so serious because, like, I'm not pigeonholed into this idea. Like, I think my character is like, kind of established enough where, like, yeah, I can kind of have fun moments, but, like, once it's time to work, flip the switch and let's go. On, on the flip, Lars, can I – Yes. Was your AEW dark match more of a tryout or was it just like, Hey, we got an opening. Why don't you come in and uh, run some ropes with us? Uh, I don't think yeah, it was, there you go. I mean, maybe it's a tryout. I don't know. Cause like, uh, when, when I was, when I had the match with Sean, so, you know, we're, we're in the back and, and, uh, we originally had eight minutes, which is a long time on dark. That's like a lot of people don't get that. And, um, and then we got cut to six, then we got cut to five. And Sean's like, hey, man, we got to take some stuff out. And, like, he sees in my face, like, because I had some, like, I, I do some cool shit, all right? I'm going to toot my horn a little bit. I do some cool stuff, you know, some intricate things that are a little different. And I and we was like, hey, we got to take that out. We need to do some other stuff. Like, just trust me, it'll be okay. And, like, because I've known Sean from NXT, and he's been, like, a huge mentor while I was there. And, like, I've always looked up to him. So, for me, I'm like, all right, man, like, I trust you because I know you know your shit. And, uh so uh, Tony had told him, he's like, hey, this isn't like a try. This isn't like a one and done, like tryout and we're good to him. Like, yes or no. It's just, it's just we'll have this moment. It'll be great. So when I talked to Tony after, um, you know, he, he was he was awesome to talk to. He said he was like he was happy. He liked the match a lot. They want to bring me back to, to whatever extent. Uh, I would tell you if I have anything happening because yeah, I, don't, I just don't have my spine anywhere, but. Uh, yeah, so I will be going. I was supposed to go back actually in December. They were in Jacksonville back COVID, so like I, I didn't go. Um, but I'm, I'll be in. I'll be going back there soon. Right. I don't. I don't I have, no one's told me, hey, you're definitely doing something. I'm going there for, like to have an opportunity to get exposure and uh, just to kind of prove, you know, that why I'm better than everyone else. Can I say that? Is that people not going to like it? You say whatever the hell you want. I think you should yeah. say that. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the thing about it is, is that like, I want to see more wrestling like you do, right? 
that's what the variety in a TV show, that's one of the reasons why I love like GCW so much is because every match is different, you know, unless they're having a tournament, a death match or whatever it is, tournament. Awesome. So we're, I mean, cause I think of the AEWs and I think of the WWEs and I just don't see you at those places, right? I'm not being, trying to be your manager or your dad or anything. I'm just wondering where you see yourself because I see you fitting in at an impact. I see you fitting in at a, a GCW. I see you fitting in at an NWA because you have this like, you know, and correct me if I'm wrong. I'm just going to give you some, a bunch more compliments, but I, you, you seem like to be like oh, more, of, of, okay. You're very <laughs> handsome. I mean, that beard, I mean, oh my God. I mean, my eyes. <laughs> see this is what i'm talking about you got very many you got a lot of sides of your personality and it's you should be able to show these things but i see you at the nwas i see you at the gcws i see you at the impacts do you have a vision about where you want to see yourself i know you're on the indies i know roh is and there's a question i'm going to come to later about but where do you see yourself what company if you could pick uh, i think oh, man whatever pays the most well, I mean, that's also like a big thing to think about too. Uh, I was making really good money at Ring of Honor, and I had just earned like a hey, like you kind of you kind of made a contract. I had I had a really good contract, and I bought a house, and and uh, that I'm, I'm uh, yeah, that I'm stressed about right now for sure. <laughs> uh, if they're all if they're all paying me the exact same thing, or they're going to pay me what I was making, right? If money wasn't an issue. Uh, I think I think I think I would do well at an AEW because stylistically I'm different than everyone else there. I mean, I think I'm different than everyone anywhere. Uh, I think I like the platform. I like that I would have the exposure to to. I'm a narcissist, man. Like, yeah, I want to see myself on TV all the time. I love it. Uh, you know, I like when I get you know phone calls and like videos from my friends. Dude, I just saw you like on TV. I'm at the bar right now, and I'm like. Well, fuck yeah like i like that it's great man it's like it's very rewarding um i would like to be an impact too i think i would do really well there i think i just do amazing there i just can't make people sign me i can't make people answer my emails i can't make people you know do certain things i've reached out to a lot of people and you know there's the the market is super saturated right now so um yeah i, I just there's a lot of things not in my control and and I'm going to keep working hard to improve and, and to stay, you know, I guess on the uphill for my performance. And, you know, if I get signed somewhere, I get signed somewhere. But, yeah, I think I think I would do really well at AW. I could have great matches with guys like Brian Danielson or Bobby, Kyle, Adam, uh, like Lee Moriarty, Yuta. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of guys there I could wrestle that would have, like, really awesome matches with. And I think I would do really well there. So like, I, that's where I would like to be. I reached out to WWE because I have a good relationship with a lot of those guys there. And, and they're just, you know, they're in the midst of like letting people go and, you know, bringing in, they're looking for something different right now. And I don't think I fit what that is. Uh, I think they said, I was like, they asked me how old I was. I think, I think I'm too old. Uh, I'm 33, but uh, I think they're trying to get like younger, younger people, which is understandable. Hey, I get it. But like, you know, their whole roster is like over 30, but uh, I can't, yeah, like, like I said, man, I can't make people sign me. I can only present um, my brand and, and and keep working on that, or I might not get signed at all, and I'll just keep crushing on the indies. You know, hey, yeah. I'm not, yeah, well, hopefully, on. maybe we'll see you out here in California. You know what I mean? So, uh, I would love to. Now, I want to talk about your brand, your look, because I feel like, as a fan of yours, boy, if you just shave that must that beard off, you could really go for that. Let that. that surfer boy look and really no what come on lars back me up here just I, I, no he does not look like the surfer boy to me oh, if anything he's got the, he's if got anything I, if anything i would go fucking completely different bro. how would you go with him I, straight up like uh like a bruiser brody not with the furry boots but just you know the hair the beard black trunks black boots I mean, you're pure, you're a pure wrestler and, but I think you're a bad guy. I think that you're a really bad, you're like, you know, you're, you're, you're a heel. I think in nature, because you're so happy, go lucky. You're, you're going to be, you, you would be 
that one of the biggest heels because you can be scary too because you can back it up because you have that co collegiate background where you can actually really stretch somebody. So, I mean, I think there's a whole story here. Let me be your fucking manager and your booker because <laughs> All right, I'm, tell I'm, tell I'm telling you, like, I, I think that he's a heel. I don't think he's a baby face. I think he's, he's pure heel just Look because he's that funny. Smile. Look at that but, smile. How do you, but, I hate that smile. Girls, girls will want to be with him and the boyfriends will hate him because the girls want to be with him. You Perfect. shave that beard. That's a Tom Cruise right there. He looks just like. Oh, great. So, oh, great. I don't know. Tom, Tom Cruise. Cruise. You look just <laughs> like Tom Cruise. Oh, oh my God. Oh, my God. I got to pull this up for you. First of all, I do not look like Tom Cruise. I'm more of an Ashton Kutcher kind of guy. Uh, oh, no. That's, that's yeah. worse, bro. Stay no, at Tom Ashton Cruise. Stay, good. stay at Tom Cruise. I got to <laughs> find, find this photo. I'm just saying, but, you, to me, you look like the, that baby face Tom Cruise if you just shaved the beard. I had see. I there's had a new gimmick right there. Top Gun. Your Top Gun. You know that, what I mean? I had the beard for a while, or I had the I had the, the shaved everything for a while. I was, I was mixing it up, and like I, I just like having a beard. You know, I don't like I don't like shaving because in college you can't have anything, and I hated it. Absolutely hated it that I had to shave all the time. I was like, come on, man. Can I just can I just not have to do that? And then now I'm like, well, I'm never shaving again. I like I like it. And my girlfriend likes it. She likes my beard. There you I go. Like, I like my beard. Does she? <laughs> Does she? Gabby, let's ask her. All right, I don't know. Can you guys see this? Wait, where's the camera right there? Right, right there. Come on, that's Ashton Kutcher. No, no, that kind no, is. You're a Tom Cruise guy. No, no I, that is very. That's a little guy, Ashton. Ashton, yeah, whatever that dude's yeah. name is. Yeah. <laughs> just don't marry Demi Moore and be her like 18th husband or whatever. I don't know. She's, 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 she's right. He's I'm, right I'm, in I'm, that I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm not gonna argue, but Elizabeth shoes way, way much so much better. Oh yeah. My girlfriend looks like Gail Godot. That's well, let's bring her on. Are you complaining or because <laughs> Gabby? Come here. Come on, Gabby. Get in here, Gabs. Come, Come on, Gabs. Gabs. Come on, G. Basil, you? <laughs> I don't care if Basil can comes in. Can she hear us? Oh, look at my sweet chair. Come <laughs> <laughs> on, sit. Yeah, Hi, I'm Gabby. Sick. Hi. Hi, how's it going? So we're, we're having a, a, a conversation about your boyfriend's beard. Do you like yeah. it? Yeah. Do you think it needs to be trimmed a little bit? Because we think if he yes. shaves it, he's Tom Cruise. See, I'm thinking more like Man Mountain, like just it goes wild, like the hair, the thing, chest, everything. You know what I mean? What if he's walking around the house in like furry boots? Are you cool with that? Uggs. Uggs. No, like not Uggs. I wear your things. He wears my slippers sometimes, but... um. And he's listening to uh, what's her name singing a Metallica Cyrus, song. Yeah. So, yeah. Miley Cyrus. Oh, he listens to Miley Cyrus like every day. <laughs> and how do you feel about that, really? I mean, she's got some catchy stuff, so I don't mind. Okay, well, <laughs> you know, see, she's got his back, so that's good. <laughs> I prefer a trimmed, a uh, trim beard. Like, like shorter than this? No, I like that length. I like shorter. Mm, I, I like shorter too. I prefer I, short. Listen, I I know that you're trying to spare his feelings and that you love your boyfriend the way he is, but <laughs> if he wasn't in this room and he was gone, you would want it shorter, wouldn't you? Come on. A little shorter. Just yeah. Long. Thank you. I feel but like if this was like 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 cut cut like if everything was trimmed and like nice edged. and groomed and yeah like edge maybe straightened brushed something I think it would look nice. Josh, but I can blow you no three bucks. World. You can go <laughs> to a barber shop and get it done on me. I, I know, no, I like my beard like this. I get it done when I get my haircut. I haven't got a haircut yet. I'm getting one next week, and then they'll line it up and they'll make it. <laughs> Well, Gabby, I, I just want to let you know that we appreciate your time and thank you for settling this argument for us. And uh, no problem. <laughs> yeah, get out of here, you. you <laughs> yeah, unless, unless you you're, come back if you're in wrestling trunks. If not, scram. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get out of here. You have the cute PJs on. You're wearing the robe. You're gonna take days yeah, out. <laughs> <laughs> All right, jo oh, did, Lars. Your question. I had the beard thing. Uh, I okay, like, well, I, you know, I used to work heel when I was in NXT and I have a lot of fun doing it and I can practice. I do it a lot and it's fun, man. Like you can, she can be a total prick and it's great. I love it. 
Well, I just think that you got kind of that monster thing to you. I think there's that's an element of your personality. Plus, you know how to freaking wrestle. Plus, you can really hurt somebody. I mean, the story writes itself. I mean, you know, it's kind of like one of those things. That's all where I was going. So, you know, oh, sorry, I'm sorry. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, because no one knows this. Oh, I was, uh, what, it's cold? Yeah. It's called winter. We live in Florida. <laughs> Come on. Oh, um, never mind. So, so in 2018, I was supposed to wrestle Jay Lethal in, um, it was maybe it was Texas or it was in West Palm or somewhere, whatever. But the plan was for me to turn heel at that point. But I had gotten like a, a gnarly like, staph infection and my whole arm just was like, I, I just, I couldn't make the show because like I had, I had a really bad infection. Like my arm was swollen and I got like blood poisoning. It was not great. Uh, so like I was supposed to turn heel at that point, but I ended up not being able to go to the show and then it just never came back. full uh, circle. So, so the world hasn't seen it yet or I haven't seen it, like a real good version of it. They saw the crappy version when I first went. <laughs> well, we got time for one more question a piece and I'm going to ask you back about the pure championship. Do you, do you recall when you knew you were going to win the belt, how you reacted, how they presented that? Hey, did you get asked the day of the show? Did you know going in? When did you find out you were going to be the pure champion? Um, so when, when Silas and I were kind of, when they were split us up and we kind of were pitching what we wanted to do for the split, like we had asked them, Hey, like, what's the plan? Like, you know, are we going to split? Are we going to get stay? Are we going to stay split? Or are we going to get back together? What we need to, you know, have this story come full circle or it's done. And uh, when I asked them, like, what the plan was, like, well, the plan is probably for you to be the next pure champion. So I knew I knew it was going to happen sooner or later. Uh, just wasn't exactly sure when it was going to happen. And and um, me and John had me and John had pitched like we had like some really good ideas of how we wanted to do it. We had like a, a three or four match program we wanted to do, but um, that didn't happen, which would have been which would, I think would have been awesome. I think people would have enjoyed it. John and I usually have pretty good matches together so that would have been pretty cool but like I never really knew specifically when I know a lot of people knew before me uh but they didn't tell me little sneaky bandits but uh I think I think I I got told officially uh like a couple of days before and I was I was pretty pumped about it I was, I was pretty pumped I'm not gonna lie I was, I was like it's like yes because like it's a lot more than like than than you know um yeah, it's controlled and stuff, but that just it just it just says a lot for what you're doing as a as a, as a worker as a performer that the company trusts you. That hey, this is like we're putting you in this role. So for me, like I I don't need gratification. I don't need a, a approval. But like when 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 you're an athlete, like in, in college or an MMA or, or whatever, you know you're doing well because I can win a national title. I can win this thing because i my skill base does that. Pro wrestling's not like that. You don't get that 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 gratification on your own actions. It's someone tells, someone puts you in a role. Someone does right. this. Someone doing this. So you don't really get that. And like that for me was like that. That hey, you're you're on the right path. You're doing everything right. And like I, I needed it, kind of a lot. Okay, I needed it, whatever. But uh, yeah, so like that was like a really good moment for me. Definitely gave me a lot of confidence and stuff. And I think, yeah, it was pretty sweet. You know, one of the things that we were asking wrestlers during the whole pandemic was the, the, the you guys were wrestling in front of no fans. And then fans kind of came back slowly but surely. And here we are now. And now we're seeing even more cross-promotional workings together. You know, you're seeing the ROH champion on Impact. You're seeing Mickey James. She's obviously going to go wrestle with uh, for the WWE with the Impact Championship. You know, you see these things happening. Now I see it's like this kind of like, AEW is kind of being moved to the side a little bit. Um, what are your thoughts on the current state of wrestling now? And the second part of that question is, is when you were wrestling in front of no fans, you know, did, did it make your job as a wrestler harder? Uh, so I'll do that part first. I think that's easier. Uh, I think I, I, I kind of like not having fans there because you know, our product is a TV product. It's different if you're doing like an indie, 
pendant, right? Uh, is that even a thing? If you could do it with no fans, that doesn't make sense. But I see I some can... pendant shows with no fans, so yeah. <laughs> yes, I, I don't know. It's strange. I'll right? say well, that, Joe. We all thought it. Different, I'll though. say it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, that's that's a different reason why. But <laughs> um, I, I enjoyed it because, you know, in my mind, if I do something – no one's there i'm getting the reaction that i want right like yes i know it's gonna happen it's cool it's like i could play in my match like hey like a lot of people were like oh there's no one here why would we do that i was like well because we're catering to the to the, the person at home you know so if i do something I'm, I'm expecting this is the reaction we would get or if there were fans here that's the reaction we would get and some people weren't playing their match that way like oh we got to do things this way and that way and, and I, I kind of enjoyed it, it was kind of fun and, and you definitely miss them for sure because like that's a different kind of energy it's a different kind of vibe but um, it didn't really make me like some stuff felt weird for sure. Like when people come down the, the ramp and they're like pandering to like the, the empty crowds, like, all right, come on, man. Like you're, you're doing your little pose in front of no, it's a little weird. You know, so the boys are in the back watching, like, what are you doing? You know, so like you'll notice like there's like the first like one or two times people were doing it, and then it just kind of falter off. And some people still do it because they're just really into it. But yeah, you see more people just get in the ring and stuff. So it's just kind of funny to watch that with the boys. But I don't think it really bothered me that much. I didn't really like feel one way or another. I was like, I'm, I was glad when they came back and like that first pay-per-view we did, I think it was, uh, I don't remember which one it was, but I wrestled Silas on it. And I just remember like hearing the people and I was like, oh shit, all right. Yeah, it was great. It was, it was the vibe. As far as the state of wrestling, cool. it's crazy, man. There's, it's almost like it's oversaturated. There's a lot of like free agents who are really good, man. So uh, I think you're going to kind of have these like cross promotional potential dream matches without people really being signed or they're going to happen, you know, in a, in an auditorium in, you know, New York or somewhere that you wouldn't think to have in front of 500 people. And it's probably going to be a damn good match. Yeah, you know, I'm, I think it's cool that you know there is a cross promotional thing because I don't know, wrestling is great, man. I think we have people what they want. I don't, I don't see why people have to be so like, oh, this guy can't work for him. I understand, like, hey, some people may don't want to lose, but you know what? Be real, man. <laughs> it's business, dude. You know, and like, people probably mad at me that I said that, and I'm shit, sorry. But it's it's really cool, man. I think I think it's great. It's a lot of possibilities and it's, it's buzz and well, people want to be entertained. That's what it's all about at the end of the day. Yeah. Is, is giving the fans something that they can they'll watch one at the end of the day and they're like, hey, if I have a crappy, let's say I have a crappy you know night, I watch like the show that I love is whatever it is, and I see this match that I've always wanted to see, or I see one person like, oh my god, this guy's in this promotion. Like it, it makes me stop thinking about the crappy day I had or the crappy week or something bad happens to me. And I think that's what's the most important is, 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 is keeping people entertained and doing, giving them something that they don't have in their life already. Back before PD Williams left the podcast to go work for the evil empire, we, we <laughs> would talk about it all the time about how he never quite understood being the 20 year pro, why some people were afraid to, you know, take a loss in wrestling. It's like, it's part of a story. Some, you can't win every match. Cause if you do, yeah. It doesn't make sense. So when you say a lot of people get mad, I don't think as many people as you think will get mad. I, I, I almost Maybe thought... Goldberg. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it comes down to protecting your brand. You know, if you're, if you're, I mean, hey, I'm not Braun Strowman, right? Like, I'm not a six foot eight, 300 pound man. You know, so like, I can understand how some people hate me. Like, it just doesn't make sense. It not making sense to lose and not want to lose are very different. That's a very different thing. Uh, so, yes. Totally agree. Listen, uh, we're at the end of this podcast, Josh. And uh, first and foremost, where can people find you? Uh, what do you have going on that, that people may want to know? Uh, so on Twitter and Instagram, Woods is the goods. I'm not a big Twitter guy. I don't know. It's just, I feel like it's a lot of negativity, man, but I'm, I'm pretty responsive on there. So like, if people like will reach out, I usually try and respond to people and I get interesting messages on both on both accounts uh they're pretty funny uh yeah i'm not gonna talk about it but you know i get some very interesting photos from a lot of guys 
Yep. I said sorry, by the way. Okay. I thought I was sending it to somebody else. Yeah, cool, man. Hey, Josh, look at this. Oh, I don't know how you got that. Oh, interesting. Was it uh, as it as it as <laughs> yeah. is it yep. Chris Saban dick pics? <laughs> oh no, not Chris Saban. No, it's not. No, yes. we had this, we had this, we had Saban on the Chris Saban dick pics. Anyways, it <laughs> I I, got, I had to bring it up. I apologize. Yeah, a lot of them. Uh, yeah, I'm in New York uh, this weekend for Catalyst Wrestling, so I'm looking forward to that. That'll be fun. I've been in New York in a while. It's really cold there. I don't like that. I'm a big baby when it comes to that kind of stuff. And so I'll be. Are you uh, taking your indie bookings based on weather? <laughs> I, sh I could start. I should like, hey man, it's seven degrees. I can't. I'm sorry. The colder it is, the more you have to pay Josh Wood to come out. Yeah. Right. Yeah, because like. Gabby always tells me, like, you need to get a jacket. I'm like, for what? We live in Florida, dude. It's like the coldest it gets here is like 50, and I have a hoodie. So, you know, whatever. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Rough living that life. I mean, I'm in Michigan. Oh, I'm, my God. Yeah. Yeah. It's cold there, isn't it, buddy? It, it is. I'm, I'm, I'm wearing this not to be stylish, but to stay warm. Well, I live in San Francisco, and it's perpetual England here. So, you know what I mean? Get a lot of rain. Josh. <laughs> it's uh, in Milwaukee. I got to tell you, thank you so much for doing this. I really, uh, you know, we were really excited for you to come on, and uh, hopefully, you'll be on more often with us coming down the line. Yeah, yeah we'll never do that. You guys are cool. This is awesome. Lars, how cool. you doing? Man? I, know you had the, I know you had the cove a little while. Yeah, ago. I'm sorry about that, man. I, yeah, it was, the, well, no, but the whole family went down, and I just I couldn't put a sentence together without coughing everywhere. So I just thought, you know, I really want to talk to you. And, you know, really want to be like present for this because I had a lot of questions and so on and so forth. I didn't get to ask them all, obviously, because Dennis steamrolled me throughout this whole fucking podcast. But he anyways, is no, he, he, he is a fucking jerk. But anyways, but thank you for asking everybody. My my uh, 10 year old who uh, was over it in about 24 hours and, oh, <laughs> and you know, because their immune systems are so much stronger. But um, the. Um, my partner, she got hit with it the worst, you know what I mean? But for me, I I don't know. I think it just living on the road and just having to do it sick, <clears throat> it just didn't, I mean, it just took me down for like two days, but that was it. So that was, that was, that was the, the bonus part. Yeah, good, man. I had it, had it for about six, six days. I was, I was a little crybaby. Let me tell you, I'm like, God, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> so <laughs> God bless Gabby. <laughs> Listen, for everybody at home, the show's over. We'll say our goodbyes off the air. Thank you guys so much. Lars, your album, where can people find it? Fucking at a store. There you go, guys. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, uh, don't go straight. Probably in the it. fucking, you go probably at the fucking used bin by now. I mean, that's <laughs> why uh, yeah. You know, if people bought less Miley Cyrus stuff and more large Frederickson yeah. stuff. I mean, but first you need to learn how to pronounce my fucking name, Lars. Dennis. You said I Lars mean, Frederickson. You called me Lards again. You're giving me a complex. I'm, I have you, COVID now. Wow, I'm Dennis. I mean, listen, on this podcast right now, at this moment, I'm in the second best shape. <laughs> <laughs> Technically, you are, yeah. <laughs> All right, I listen. Mean, I can't find Kate. There you go. Hey, let's look for Lars Lars Fredrickson versus Josh Woods coming soon to Try a that. indie show near you guys. It's a wrestling perspective. Thank you so much. Have a good night. <laughs>